This might be one of the weirdest creatures on Earth. And it's not from some remote jungle in the tropics. There's actually a good chance it's living in your backyard right now. It's springtime in North Carolina. One of my favorite times of year, all of the weird little arthropods and reptiles that we know and love are starting to move as warmer weather rolls in. While the daytime is buzzing with life, it's the night that gets really interesting. I'm Spencer Hoffman, and in my search for the natural world's strangest and deadliest secrets, I've found that heading out after dark sometimes gets you up close and personal with both. When the veil of darkness falls, some of the more secretive and alien life that's living right alongside us creeps out from its daytime hiding spots to forage, safe from watching eyes. And while taking a quick scouting run to the creek that runs through my yard, I found something quite unusual. Oh, check this out. That is one of the cyanide millipedes. How cool is that? He's a neat colored one too. Hi. How are you? Look at that. Now this is something really, really special. Have a look at this odd looking creature. The way it moves, crawling over my hand, probing me with those antennae there. This is a very interesting millipede. And if I like Spencer, yeah, it is, it is kind of a neat looking millipede, isn't it? Funny looking colors and stuff. And those funny colors are actually one clue as to why I find these millipedes so interesting. Millipedes belong to the subphylum Myriapoda. The myriapods get their name from having an absolute abundance of legs and contain some of the most terrifying arthropods on Earth. Giant centipedes that dominate the subterranean world of the tropics and subtropics. Bizarre soil centipedes with the most unique animal venoms in the world. And giant armored millipedes with some of the hardest shells in the arthropod world. But not this millipede. What we have here is one of the polydesmid millipedes, the flat millipedes. And their striking coloration is intentional. It warns potential predators of the dangerous secrets they hide. He is bright pink and jet black with those bright yellow legs underneath. This guy wouldn't blend in too well in the leaf litter environments that he calls home. He wants to be seen because this millipede is poisonous. Probably like Spencer, don't you mean venomous? But in the case of centipedes, venomous would be correct because they're using those modified front legs to inject venom into their prey. But millipedes don't actually do that. They're not, they're not predatory and honestly, you'd be pretty hard pressed to get a millipede to ever bite you. Millipedes are scavengers. They're prowling the forest floor looking for decaying plant and sometimes animal material, which they're eating and breaking down. Very, very important role in the ecosystem. They don't, they don't need venom to subdue their prey. But when you are a slow moving little invertebrate, you do need some cool defenses to make sure that you can actually survive to eat and reproduce. Now, most millipedes are known as being super, super armored. They're some of the hardest bodied arthropods besides beetles, but these flat millipedes like this one are not quite as hard bodied. So they need a different defense mechanism. If you smell them, it smells kind of like almonds. What's that all about? Well, it might smell kind of nice if you like almonds. For a lot of animals, they recognize that smell as being poison. See, almonds smell an awful lot like a very potent toxin known as hydrogen cyanide, which you've probably heard of if you've ever watched a spy film. Cyanide is a very fun little poison that actually basically breaks down your cell's ability to process oxygen. So you get too much of it in your system and you suffocate and die even if you can breathe. And this guy is a little cyanide factory. You're probably like, what are you doing holding it? As long as I keep him relatively calm and I'm not sitting there inhaling his spray or eating him, there's not enough cyanide produced by this millipede to really have any effect on me. In fact, as long as I keep him calm, he's really not gonna spray too much. That's the thing, since it is a poison, I have to literally ingest, I have to eat or inhale this millipede for it to have any effect on me. But as cool as that is, that's also not the reason that I was so excited to find this guy tonight because I've actually read that kind of like scorpions, they can glow in the dark under a UV light. So I actually brought my little UV flashlight out and I wanna test it out and see if it actually works. So I'm gonna get it going here. Oh yeah, look at that. 
You can see on my hand there, he fluoresces. Neon green. That's incredible. I've never actually seen a millipede that's able to do that. And I bet you haven't either, like, especially underneath. Like, you see his legs? Those legs really glow. That is wild. Now, just like with scorpions, we're not entirely sure why that is. When we see animals like scorpions, like this millipede that glow under UV light, it's something we call biofluorescence. And with arthropods, we're not entirely sure why it happens. The leading hypothesis with scorpions is that it helps them detect UV light. If they're out foraging around on a moonlit night, it is more likely that they'll be spotted by potential predators and then be eaten. I would imagine it's probably something similar with this millipede, but again, it's poisonous, so it's got other defenses that are gonna make sure that things don't eat it. So I'm really not sure what purpose fluorescence serves a millipede, but I'd be lying if I said it wasn't pretty darn cool. Millipedes are awesome. Myriapods are such weird, wild creatures. And one of my favorite things to do is just watch them move. Millipedes have this like wave of legs moving up their body as they walk. And it's just amazing how they coordinate all those little legs. I have a hard enough time coordinating two legs. Imagine coordinating dozens of legs like these guys do. Really, really crazy biology. Look at them probing my hand there. They're primarily nocturnal, subterranean creatures only coming out after dark when it's cooler. Just like centipedes, they actually lack a waxy cuticle on their exoskeleton. So when it's nice and cool and dark and the sun's not beating down on him, he is a lot more comfortable to move around. If he's out in the daylight, he will dry up super fast. And instead of being a nice, cool, fun millipede for us to find, he will be crispy and the ants will come and eat him. We don't want that. He is, he is cool, he is friendly. What an incredible little millipede. And how weird is that, that they glow in the dark? And this is one of the more common families of millipede too. If you live in the US, there's a good chance that this species or one of his close cousins is living in your backyard right now. So I challenge you to get a little cheap UV light off of Amazon or something and uh, actually shine around at night. You might be surprised what weird glow in the dark creatures you might find. Absolutely incredible. These bizarre millipedes aren't the only thing lurking in the darkness. And sometimes there are ways to bring the nocturnal apparitions to you instead of hunting them down yourself. To try and find one of the scariest insects you've ever seen, I tried my hand at just that in this video right here. Hope to see you there, but until next time, don't forget to get outside and find your own adventure.